they would. It's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Keith Holton. How are you this morning? Oh, pretty good, Sheriff. How about yourself? Oh, I'm fine, Dandy. You were over at the city hall this morning, huh? Yeah, that's right. I requested the coroner to conduct an inquest into the death of George Henderson. Yeah, I know. The coroner left it up to me. Huh? Yeah, came into my office and asked me if I had any reason to conduct an inquest into the death of George Henderson. I told him I didn't have any reason, but I'd do it if I was ordered to. Well, what happens now? Well, somebody will have to decide whether there's going to be an inquest or not. Who? Mayor, I guess. I don't know. Anyhow, you stirred up some action, and you'll be getting it. Yeah, where? Just stay where you are, son. My guess is it'll come right to you. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Paramount Insurance Adjusters, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Henderson matter. The death of George Henderson of Culver, Montana, where I am today. A casual certification announced that death is accidental, having been received by a fall from a hotel window. No one in Culver seemed to be too worried about any of the details. But details are my job. That's why I requested the coroner's office to conduct an inquest. I took Sheriff Holton's suggestion and waited to see what my request flushed up in the dingy-colored mountains of Culver. An hour later, my first bird winged up to my hotel room. He was a tall, gray-haired man in a Stetson, earmuffs, and the worst inversion of a Chesterfield. His honor, Mayor Newton. Mr. Dollar, I want to talk to you about this request you made for an inquest into George Henderson's death. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. You are aware, of course, that George's death, and he was one of my beloved and personal friends for many, many years, was a great blow to the entire community. No, I didn't know that, Mayor Newton. Huh? Only the smallest part of the community were at his funeral yesterday afternoon. His widow and, I'd say, not more than half a dozen other people. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> Well, I understand that your insurance company is not quite satisfied with the certification. Is that correct? Uh, more or less. What would they need to be satisfied, sir? An exact knowledge of how Mr. Henderson fell out that hotel window. I would rather no inquest were held into Mr. Henderson's death. Why? Why, sir, George Henderson is dead and buried. It should remain that way. If an inquest were to be held, it would only prove that George fell out of a window. I beg you to consider that, Mr. Dollar. You seem very certain that an investigation would prove that death was accidental. Man. It was accidental. George fell out the window. Well, I can't just tell that to my insurance company, can I? Hmm. <clears throat> uh, we are a small community with a rudimentary police force, not equipped in any way for an exhaustive investigation nor for the financial burden of such an investigation. I strongly urge you to reconsider this request for a coroner's inquest. You do? I do indeed. His untimely death was an unfortunate occurrence outside the pale of any of our poor abilities to foresee. A terrible, terrible accident. I'd like proof of that. Proof? An inquest, Mr. Mayor. An inquest. All right. We will continue with the Henderson matter in a moment. Friends, how'd you like to thrill your favorite youngster with some of the most exciting toys of the year? Picture the breathless excitement of any child surrounded by six gaily colored balloon-like giant animals up to three feet long, and all for the low, low price of just one dollar. First, you get Bounzo the Clown with round pot belly and funny nose. Next comes Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo. Third, there's Roscoe the Roller Skating Bear. He's two feet tall and looks almost like real. Fourth, there's Whitey the Fat Indoor Snowman. And fifth, Mortimer the Giant Mouse, 18 inches long and sure to scare the whiskers off any cat. 
That's five different giant animals. But now hold your breath for the most sensational toy of all, the star of the whole Christmas season, the jolly giant talking Santa Claus. Guaranteed to make everybody's Christmas a merrier one. He's a big roly-poly happy Santa. He stands erect on two legs, is actually over three feet tall and 32 inches around. Best of all, he actually talks. Just pull the tape and he says, Merry Christmas for all to hear. He's the biggest, merriest talking as Santa ever. Sure to please your youngsters and spread good cheer. Yes, Giant Santa proves there really is a Santa Claus. That's a total of six giant animals made of brightly colored preformed sturdy latex, which the kids can easily inflate. And the cost, just one dollar, not for each. Just one dollar for all six of these lovable giants who'll turn your home into a circus parade. And here's a surprise. Mail your order today and you'll also receive absolutely free Peter the Rabbit, actually over two feet tall with big red ears almost nine inches long. But you must send now. Rush $1 plus 10 cents for packing and mailing for each set you want to Giant Animals Box 46 Grand Central Station, New York City. If not delighted with every one of your seven giant animals, return them to the Super Animals Company for a full refund, but keep the giant talking Santa as our gift. Order now. Supplies are limited. Rush $1.10 for packing and mailing for each set in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 46, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's $1 plus 10 cents with your name and address. Mail to Giant Animals, Box 46, Grand Central Station, New York City. Giant Animals, Box 46, Grand Central Station, New York City. My interview with Mayor Newton had convinced me that I'd get no real help from him in the Henderson matter. Quite the contrary. Expense account item three, 20 cents, coffee. Myself and Sheriff E. Fulton. Well, you got it. Huh? At the direction of Mr. Jackson. That's our coroner. He deputized me temporarily to conduct an inquest. It's going to take place tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, City Hall. Tomorrow, Sheriff? Room 207. Well, Eve, you won't have time to do anything. No, I guess I won't. Not much, anyhow. Oh, brother. The mayor pitched me pretty hard for not having the inquest. Knew he would. Any idea why? Nope. You think somebody asked him to stop it? Yeah. Who? Don't know, Johnny. Honest. The next morning, I struggled my way against a belligerent north wind to City Hall and the inquest, if you could call it that. I sat in the back of the room and listened while a Dr. Horace Nam assured the six-man jury that George Henderson was quite dead when he was called out of his office and examined him on the street. Dr. Nam reckoned George had died from a broken neck. An ancient bellhop, a desk clerk, and a chambermaid gave their versions of what had happened the day Henderson fell out the window. Now, uh, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help you God. I do, Sheriff. I'm the acting coroner today, Miss Cubley. Uh, sit down. Now, when did you see Mr. Henderson last? Last Thursday morning. Where was this, Miss Cubley? At the Butte Hotel. Mm -hmm. You know what time of the morning it was? About 10 o'clock. I went in to make his bed and straighten up his room. I see. I made his bed while he worked on some papers there, and then I left. Did you see him after that? No, sir. You didn't see him come downstairs for breakfast or anything? No, sir. Do you know if anybody went up to see him? I believe I saw Mrs. Henderson in the lobby after that. Do you see Mrs. Henderson in this room? Yes, sir. I believe that's Mrs. Henderson over there. No, that's Mrs. Henderson. Now, do you know if Mrs. Henderson visited Mr. Henderson in his room? No, sir. I don't know that. Miss Cubley, did you happen to notice if anyone else went up to Mr. Henderson's room that morning? No, sir. It went on all morning long. Sheriff Holton, acting in the coroner's position, questioned person after person. All had more or less the same vague knowledge concerning George Henderson's death. I was most interested in Pauline Henderson's testimony. Now then, Mrs. Henderson, when did you last see your husband? Thursday. I went to see him about noon, maybe a little before. Where did you see him, Miss Henderson? At the Butte Hotel, in his room there. The same room he occupied prior to his death? Of course. The same room from which he fell? Yes. Were you alone when you went to see him, Mrs. Henderson? Yes. I must have left before 12.30. I had an appointment at the dentist. And that was the last time you saw your husband alive? Yes. I was still in the dentist's chair when they told me he'd fallen out the window. 
What uh, what did you and your husband talk about, Mrs. Anderson? Must I answer that? Well, we're trying to determine something here. I'd appreciate it. George and I discussed our divorce. Could you tell us about that? George and I decided to part about a month ago. He moved out of the house and moved into the hotel. Mm Mm-hmm. Outside of the divorce, were you on good terms? Oh, yes, we've always been on good terms. Mrs. Henderson, do you think there's a chance that he might have thrown himself out that window? Mrs. Mrs. Henderson, do you think he might have thrown himself out that window? No, at least not over us, if that's what you mean. As far as you knew, was your husband in good health? Yes, he was. You happen to know when he was examined last? A month or so ago, he was in perfect health. Uh, One more thing. Did Mr. Henderson drink? Yes. Did he drink that morning with you? Oh, I think he had a couple of drinks. Yes, yes, he had a drink or two while we were talking. He could have stumbled at that window. The clothes were New York, the perfume Paris, the jewelry Tiffany's. The look you might expect it on the Riviera, where everybody tries to act bored with too many good things in life. Her dress, black for the occasion of death, was cut too well and too carefully for her to pass as a grieving widow. She answered the questions without hesitation or emotion. Fifteen minutes later, the jury brought in the expected verdict. Therefore, it is the opinion of this jury that the said deceased George Walter Henderson came to his death as a result of injuries incurred in a fall from the fourth floor of the Butte Hotel at or about 12.45 p.m. on the 19th day of this month. No evidence to the contrary. It is deemed and declared that the manner of death was accidental. Adjourned. And that was it. As far as Culver's people, its police and its mayor were concerned. Yeah, the mayor. Well, Mr. Dollar, I hope you're satisfied. It was a pretty good inquest, Mayor Newton. I trust the official verdict of the jury will answer any questions your insurance company might have had on their minds and clear this whole matter up. Hmm? I'll forward it to them and tell them the circumstances under which the inquest was conducted, Mr. Mayor. Satisfactory, I trust. No, but it served a purpose. Now that everybody thinks it was an accident, everybody will breathe easier. Certainly. Yeah. If everybody's relaxing like that... Somebody's going to get careless. See you, Mr. Mayor. Johnny Dollar will be back in a moment to tell you about tomorrow's episode. Friends, send for your set of some of the most exciting toys of the year. Six giant inflatable toys for only one dollar, some up to three feet tall. You get Bounce the Happy Clown, Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo, Roscoe the two feet long roller skating bear, Whitey the fat indoor snowman, Mortimer the giant mouse, 18 inches long, and last but not least, the great giant talking Santa, a roly-poly giant over three feet tall and 32 inches around the belly that actually says Merry Christmas out loud when you pull the tape. That's six sensational giant toys for only one dollar, made of sturdy, gaily colored latex that the kids can easily inflate. Send one dollar for each set to Giant Animals, Box 46, Grand Central Station, New York City. And if you order right now, you get Peter the Rabbit over two feet tall absolutely free. If not delighted with your Giant Animals, your money refunded immediately. Order today. You may never hear this offer again. Rush one dollar plus ten cents for packing and mailing in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 46, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's one dollar plus ten cents for each set with your name and address. To Giant Animals, Box 46, Grand Central Station, New York City. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of The Henderson Matter. People do get careless tomorrow, all over Culver, Montana. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.